you, me, some geeks, and a gadget. We got D-Link's DGL4500 on this episode of Gadget. We'd like to thank our production sponsors, the University Catholic Center, the California Province of the Society of Jesus, and Gateway. Mother's Milk for Uber Geeks. Hello and welcome back to Gadget at the Techstop.net. It's a place where it's always time to get your geek on. I'm your host, Father Robert Balliser of the Society of Jesus, the California province of the Jesuits. We're the largest religious order of the Catholic Church, and we're here in the Center for Apostolic Technology at the University Catholic Center on the campus of the University of Hawaii. Now again, I want to thank everyone who's been dropping by the Tech Stop and uh, clicking on our videos, downloading the high-resolution versions. You've been very, very helpful. We've actually topped seven terabytes of data a week now which uh, is absolutely phenomenal so thank you very much we owe our success to you now we've got something that uh is actually pretty dang cool we've got the dgl 4500 from d-link this is a mimo a multiple input mu multiple output wireless router with a couple of twists First of all, it is 802.11a compatible, and we'll talk about that a little bit later, which means that uh, it gives you far more options for your wireless devices, your notebook, your desktop, whatever Wi-Fi devices you might be using around the house. It's, uh, it's designed for gamers. I mean, this is a piece of gear, their top-of-the-line flagship, that uh, D-Link puts out there for those who absolutely don't want any lag. They don't want any delay. They want their games to get priority over their network. It is the most important thing that they do. Well, we've got a, a quick look at the inside of this router to see if maybe this might be the thing for the uber geek gamer in you. The DGL4500 is the flagship gaming-focused router in Dealing's Gamer Lounge Extreme and line of products. It has 4 gigabit LAN ports, a gigabit WAN port, and one USB port for Windows Connect Now. I was really excited by Dealing's decision to include gigabit Ethernet not only on the four LAN ports, but on the WAN port as well. Though most of us do not have a gigabit connection to the internet, having a gigabit WAN port opens the possibility of using the DGL4500 as an internal router firewall without having to sacrifice the transfer speed of being directly connected to a gigabit network. The DGL4500 is unique among most home-oriented wireless routers in that it supports not just 802.11b, g, and draft n, but also 802.11a. This is a huge bonus for anybody who lives in an area that is saturated by 2.4 GHz wireless signals. Though 802.11a uses a much less penetrative signal, meaning that it doesn't pass through walls, windows, doors, and people nearly as well as 802.11b, g, or n, the fact that it operates in the 5 GHz range means that you will finally be able to use that 802.11a option on your wireless card, desktop, or laptop, and most likely you'll be using it all alone. Adding to the wireless goodness are three detachable reverse SMA antenna ports. By having detachable antennas, D-Link allows users to truly customize their wireless setup. D-Link has incorporated their game fuel technology into the DGL4500. This is essentially a preset list of rules of QoS, or quality of service, that ensures that your online gaming applications get priority in the queue for your internet connection. The DGL4500 allows you to customize the game fuel rules to fit your choice of games, protocols, and connection types. The bottom line for gamers is that there's much less of a possibility of lag. Perhaps the most distinctive feature of the DGL4500 is the network activity display on top of the unit. This slick little OLED gives users an at-a-glance representation of how the network is configured. Everything from time to upload, download speed, encryption, wireless status, signal strength, and internal networking settings can be seen and displayed. More than that, the two navigation buttons also give users access to instructions for using the Wi-Fi protected setup in the DGL4500. This feature allows users to set up Wi-Fi protected enabled devices with a single push of the button. In this case, the button is located on the side of the router. 
D-Link will also be releasing an SDK that allows more advanced users to program the screen to display any setting, any message, or whatever the user wants on the screen. The OLED screen turns the router from a device that is designed to be wedged into the back of a network closet to one that should be proudly displayed on the desktop of every Uber geek on the planet. The Windows Connect Now option is one of the best implementations of the feature that I've seen. It allows you to use your Windows Wireless Networking Wizard to create your network settings on your desktop, automatically drop those settings onto a USB flash drive, then set up your DGL4500 by simply plugging the USB drive into the back of the router. Aside from those standout features, D-Link has included everything that you might expect on a high-end Soho router. Port forwarding, port triggering, virtual servers, access control, web filtering, universal plug-and-play, multicasting, dynamic DNS, logging, and scheduling. If you need it, it's probably here. The DGL4500 is available now. The lowest prices that we found online were between $175 and $200. People who have been watching Gadget for a while know that every time I've reviewed a router, the biggest negative I always have is the fact that they use 10 100 Ethernet ports. I mean, it just didn't make sense to me. Gigabit isn't an option. It's something that should be standard on every modern piece of hardware. I mean, we use Gigabit. We, we transfer the files. We have the data that would justify that extra bit of speed. So why not put it on your device? Well, it seems as if Dinglink has finally heard that. And in this router, they have not only Gigabit on the LAN, but they have a Gigabit on the WAN. And they give the DGL4500 a powerful CPU, powerful enough to handle that amount of traffic. Now, I have heard, I've actually read on the internet that some people have said that if you overload the device, it will randomly reset if you throw a lot of traffic through it. Well, we maxed it out using Ixia's iX Chariot for three weeks, and we weren't able to get it to tip over. We weren't able to get it to reset. It did get a little bit warm when we were doing the, the highest level test, but, uh, I mean, it was stable the entire time. That might have something to do with the fact that we're running the 1.2 version firmware. So if you have a DGL4500 and you're having that reset problem, go ahead and upgrade your firmware and that should take care of it. Aside from that, the biggest complaint we have is with the wireless. It works well. I mean, the, the B, the G, the N, the A, they all had great range. They had great power. We had wonderful speed. But there's this little quirk with the DGL4500, which is you can only use one band, one set of spectrum at the same time. So that's either the, the 2.4 gigahertz band, that's the 802.11 B, G, or N, or the 5 gigahertz spectrum, and that's the 802.11 A. Why they did this, I'm not really sure. I, I'm betting that if I asked, they would say it had something to do with the, uh, the FCC regulations on spectrum and blah, 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 blah. All I know is that they've got the power in there. They've got the two sets of radios. They've got the CPU. It would be nice to be able to enable both sets of radios at the same time so that you could have a mixed network. You could, say, open up your B, your G uh, radios for everyone else who has just those, and then, say, reserve the 802.11a spectrum for you. Now, again, like we mentioned, since it does use 802.11a, it means that if you've got an area, you live in a place or you work in a place that is saturated by 2.4 gigahertz radios and you really can't get a signal, this is perfect for you because it will operate at 5 gigahertz and uh, since not many people turn on their 802.11a or have 802.11a in their devices, you'll be by yourself. It, it's, it's a fantastic, fantastic way to sort of carve out a little piece of the uh, wireless internet for yourself. Aside from that, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a very capable router. It's wall mountable. It comes with a bracket so that you can tilt it up sideways. Or, like what we do here, you can just leave it on your desk. And with that OLED screen, it becomes quite attractive. It's not just a hugely, fantastically, wonderfully functional piece of technology, but it looks good, too. The one thing is it does have that shiny surface, which means that it will attract fingerprints like me to fried chicken. Now, if you're looking for a wireless Soho router, if you want something that's a bit more performance-oriented than your bargain basement router, and if you can afford somewhere between $175 to $200 for something that just is quite good, or if you're a gamer and you want no compromised gaming online experiences, 
then might I suggest you take a look at the DGL 4500. You can go to the D-Link website at www.dlink.com and just use their wizard to find the DGL 4500. Check out the specs and see if maybe this might be for you. Well, that's all the time we have for this episode of Gadget. If you want to find out more about the DGL 4500 or any of the other products that we've reviewed on the show, you can go to our website at www.thetechstop.net. If you click on the Gadget tab, you'll be able to find links for the high-resolution versions of all of our shows. If you'd like to write us, you can reach us at gadget at thetechstop.net. Well, thanks for watching. I've been your host, Father Robert Balliser. This has been the Center for Apostolic Technology. And remember, there's no Uber Geek without you.